The following presentation is brought to you as a courtesy from Forex Academy. This is part of our service, Advanced Technical Analysis Course. If you find it interesting and wish to be updated on new releases, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or join our community at forex.academy and receive all our services for free. Your like is also highly appreciated. Enjoy. Hello everybody and welcome to another installment of the live advanced technical analysis course. This is webinar number seven. There'll be a total of 12 that make up the course and the subject that we'll be looking at today in webinar seven is trading the trend. This will be a very interesting webinar because it will also focus on illustrating <clears throat> for the first time, how you can actually take some technical analysis concepts and then transform them into a disciplined trading strategy. Forex Academy is an online provider of educational facilities to traders of financial markets and cryptocurrencies. All of the content that you will view in the advanced technical analysis course is educational material, the purpose of which is to introduce you to the tools, the techniques, and the topics that exist under the subject matter known as technical analysis. Once you are familiar with these applications, you can then consider incorporating them into your analysis and your trading techniques to assist in improving your overall, or overall ability to make more improved decision-making uh, decisions within the marketplace. Just a few housekeeping issues before we continue. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the course of the webinar. You can locate your chat box on the right of the screen. I will obviously be able to see your questions. This is a live webinar. It is being recorded and will be placed in your members area once the webinar has concluded. As always, we'll be hosting an extended Q&A session at the end of this live webinar. The course overview has followed the same process this week as it did in week one, whereby from Monday through to Wednesday, we'll be introducing you to some educational material. Each week ends on a Thursday with a workshop which covers the material that we've looked at in the preceding three webinars and takes on a more practical application in terms of illustrating how to apply these tools and techniques to the marketplace course overview will follow the same routine next week. There will be an end of course workshop on Thursday. It will not only focus on the previous three webinars in terms of the material that we've covered, but will illustrate more comprehensively in terms of how you can look at incorporating a large chunk of the material that we've covered through the entire course in terms of developing a more disciplined approach to both analyzing and trading the financial markets. In today's webinar, we'll be focusing a lot of our attention on how to trade the trend. We will be taking a look at least in terms of recapping some key considerations relating to the trend. We will also just recap the importance of understanding a trend. We will revisit the concept of the trend is your friend and why this is very important for each and every trader. We will then look at revisiting something that we looked at yesterday, defining the trend through the slope of moving averages, and then bring into the discussion momentum, which was also a topic that we discussed yesterday in terms of illustrating how we could then use the momentum oscillator to more precisely look at timing a trading decision once a directional bias, i.e., your preferred direction in the market has been established. Risk management, as always, is extremely important when it comes to trading. And we will show you how, by using both the concepts of momentum indicators as well as trend definition skills, principally through the slope of the moving average in terms of today's discussion, how these both these topics can facilitate your management of risk. 
we'll be extending this discussion by looking at the aspect of timing a trade and how the risk management can also then be incorporated into that decision-making process. Over the course of the entire webinar, we'll be looking at a number of applications to really illustrate how you can consider taking the ideas that we'll look at today and perhaps even going back on your own research in the market and considering developing either some of these skills or all of these skills into a more comprehensive trading strategy. We've mentioned this before, that trading the trend is gener generally regarded as the best strategy traders should adopt. And this is something that we firmly believe in, and at least as a first step, advise that this is the view that you should take. Certainly, it is not the only trading strategy that exists. There are many contra-trending strategies, uh, but essentially, the trend and trading the trend is generally accepted to be the best strategy for traders to adopt. Because of this, it then really reinforces the fact that understanding the trend and understanding trend conditions are very important. Being able to identify the direction the market moving in is essential and as I'm sure you can appreciate by now, it is the first step to your decision, your trade decision making process. What we'll illustrate over the course, <clears throat> excuse me, of today's webinar is how we can bring these concepts together, i.e. the concepts of direction, moving average slope, and momentum to fine tune our decision making process. Trading, remember, is all about direction, but not just about direction. Timing is extremely important, and risk management is very, very important, something that should never be overlooked in terms of its relevance to increasing the chances of you surviving over the medium to long term in the marketplace. What we'll do over the course of this webinar is show you how we can bring together the idea about establishing direction, improving our timing, focusing on our risk management to improve our overall trading success. Let's start off our discussion with a focus on the trend and just recap some key considerations. You'll recall that a trend is defined by a series of highs and lows. In other words, an uptrend is defined by higher highs and higher lows. A downtrend is defined simply by the existence of lower lows and lower highs. It's as simple as that. Always bear in mind this straightforward definition of a trend and apply the application to price action. You will go a long way in terms of establishing the underlying trend condition and perhaps more importantly too, when that trend condition changes. <clears throat> In a bull market, you'll recall that we stressed the trend is managed through its lows, i.e. its corrective lows. This provides us with an ability to then identify support levels. So in a bull market, support levels are the more important of the two types of levels that we consider, support and resistance. In a downtrend or in a bear market, the trend is managed through the corrective highs, i.e. We are then able to identify and establish where our important resistance levels lie. Very important to remember that the more times a trend is validated, the more significant that trend becomes. So if, for example, you were using a trend line, you'll recall when we looked at trend lines that all you need to do to establish a trend line is to find or identify your two starting points. So if it was an uptrend, you'd identify two key support points, join those two points and extend the line forward. If you can see that on a number of occasions, the trend line has actually been tested, i.e. price action has pulled back to the trend line and has held a support resulting in a subsequent reaction to the upside in price action, then the more times that condition has developed over the lifespan of the trend and the trend line, 
the more significant that trend becomes. And this becomes equally more important in terms of when reversals take place. If, for example, at some later stage, with the trend line having been tested three, or four, or five times, thereby increasing the validity of that trend line, it is then subsequently broken. The break of that trend line should be regarded as a significant development because of the relative importance of the trend line. So the more a trend is validated, the more significant it becomes. Identifying or being able to identify your trend support and resistance is key. This is important because it not only helps facilitate the management of the trend, but perhaps more importantly, it helps improve and fine tune your risk management approach as well. Remember, the trend is always your friend. Stick with the trend until it reverses. So if we look at the slide in front of us, you'll recall that we focused on this illustration last week. You'll remember, in terms of what we've just said as well, that an uptrend is defined as a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. If you can understand that concept and appreciate it and apply it to the markets, you will have made a big leap in terms of being able to evaluate a trend. Because we have the sequence of higher highs and higher lows, we identify at various stages of the life cycle of the trend that the market finds a trend high that establishes resistance, price action pulls back, it identifies or finds support at a corrective low and then begins to recover. The market then travels to a particular point and repeats this process. A trend high exists, a correct, corrective low identifies the point where demand begins to start pushing prices higher and the market then continues to travel in a northward direction registering fresh trend highs. These sequence of higher highs and higher lows help us identify or allow us the opportunity to identify these important corrective lows. Remember, an uptrend is defined through its corrective lows, i.e. support. So these two levels will be critical going forward one as the trend continues to push in an upward direction. Certainly, once we've identified a corrective low and the market has broken above this trend high, then this support level falls away in terms of the trend management and this support level becomes the relevant point in which we gauge the existence or the strength of the current uptrend. As long as the sequence of higher highs and higher lows is maintained, the trend is assumed to be up. Very important that you always come to that type of conclusion. Certainly, the opposite will exist when we are dealing with the downtrend. Now, you'll recall from the recent discussions that we've had, whereby the market travels to this trend high, finds support once again, which is perfectly normal condition. We expect that to happen. Prices then start to push higher. However, in this instance, they find resistance at this particular point over here that prevents an ability to move above the former trend high. In other words, to maintain the sequence of higher highs and higher lows. Instead, price action begins to move lower and eventually breaking below the last or the most recent corrective low. When that happens, the trend condition has changed. We have gone from witnessing a sequence of higher highs and higher lows to now seeing the development of a sequence of lower lows and lower highs. In other words, from a directional perspective, the market has moved from up to down. Very important that you become comfortable with being able to evaluate trend direction in this manner. You're able to establish the two components. What needs to exist for a trend to remain intact? And then subsequently, what needs to occur to suggest that the trend is under threat or perhaps has even already reversed in the opposite direction. 
let's take a look at this illustration in front of you. Now, no one can deny that the trend has indeed been up in terms of the information that we have in front of us. We can clearly see that the market has traveled from this low, from these lows down here, up to these highs at this point. If we simply just overlay a, an illustration in terms of capturing the swings in price action, we can see that the market has moved something along the lines of what I am currently drawing on the chart. You can clearly see that the market has established a clear sequence of higher highs and higher lows. Each time the market pulls back, the former key support levels or the former corrective low is unchallenged. In other words, it remains intact. That simply needs to exist if we are dealing with an uptrend. So you can see by a number of the support levels that have been highlighted, in other words, the corrective lows, on each subsequent pullback, the last corrective low has remained intact. So what have we done? At this point in time, we've been able to establish the direction of the trend, i.e. the trend is up, through the observation that a sequence of higher highs and higher lows exist. <clears throat> what we've also then been able to identify, because we understand the concept of the sequence of highs and lows that defines an uptrend, is to then seek out our key support levels. These support levels represent the corrective lows every time the market pulls back. Now, clearly there are a number of corrective lows. I'll just highlight a few over here. What we've simply done in this explanation or in this example is to highlight the key turning points. And that's really, that should be your starting point. If we then, if we then explore in perhaps more detail the move from this low to this high over here, then certainly these corrective lows become relevant to this current leg. In other words, you could consider it as an internal observation, an internal trend observation of the broader bull trend. And you apply, simply apply the same logic and the same explanation. A sequence of higher highs and higher lows exists. That ability to identify the trend through that definition then allows you to identify your support levels. So, establish the direction of the trend. You understand what the definition of a trend is. Identify your support levels if it's an uptrend, your resistance levels if you're dealing with a downtrend, and then you can come to a conclusion as to what trading decisions you are ready to make. In other words, in this example, with the trend still up, as long as the underlying uptrend remains intact, we need to approach this market as one that offers buying opportunities. In other words, we will be looking to go long. So essentially what you have done is you've established your directional bias. It is bullish. Therefore, you need to identify buying opportunities in this market. Something that we looked at yesterday, and just to recap some of the important components, and that is defining the trend through the slope of the median average. What we illustrated is that the one advantage in terms of using moving averages is to look at the slope of the moving average. And the advantage, the reason we do this is because the slope of the moving average can establish your trend direction. It's an additional piece of information over the topics around the price sequences that we just discussed that will further reinforce the direction of the trend. So the trend direction is defined through the slope of the moving average. If we have a positive slope, it's an uptrend. If we have a negative slope, we're dealing with a downtrend. If the slope appears to be more neutral, then we are dealing with a potential market that is moving in a sideways direction. We've just mentioned these two points. Now, if we take the slope of the moving average as defining the trend, and we have a combination where we are dealing with higher highs and higher lows, and a positive sloping moving average, 
well then that's further reinforcing evidence that you are indeed dealing with an uptrend. Likewise, if you have a negative sloping moving average and lower lows and lower highs define the downtrend, then the combination or the existence of these two components highlights the fact that you are clearly dealing with a strong bearish trend. The fact that we can observe the setup, the price sequence together with the slope of the moving average provides us with an opportunity to trade. Let's take a look at an illustration to highlight what we have just discussed. Once again, in this particular chart, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that markets have moved in an upward direction. We've traveled from these lows up to these highs over here. This is the chart that we saw earlier, and you will recall that we came to the conclusion that the trend is up, principally because we are dealing with a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. Therefore, the market should provide buying opportunities. If we can then apply some additional information and bring into the equation a moving average and simply look at the slope of the moving average, we can see that the slope of the moving average has, for the most part of the recovery, also been sloping in a or identifying a positive slope. So we have a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. We have a positive sloping moving average. Therefore, the trend is clearly defined as being bullish. Once again, as we did earlier, we then identify our key support levels. So as a starting point to confirm our overall directional bias, what we have done is we've established in which direction the sequence of highs and lows are moving. In this instance, they are moving in an upward direction, i.e. we're dealing with the bull trend. We then bring into the equation a moving average to make an observation of the slope of the moving average. And we can see that for a big chunk of the recovery in price action, the slope of the moving average is positive. Therefore, the existence of a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, as well as a positive sloping moving average, confirms that we are dealing with a strong uptrend. Our challenge now is to extend the decision that this market offers buying opportunities to identify how we can fine tune when to make decisions to go long on this particular market. Before we continue, one point that I'd just like to further highlight in terms of what we discussed yesterday, one of the disadvantages that we men mentioned around using moving averages, or rather not disadvantages, but one of the aspects that you need to be aware of in terms of applying moving averages is the lag factor. You can very clearly see that while we've had a positive slope in moving average over here, prices have sold off quite sharply for a period of time. That has then resulted in the market turning quite flat. Clearly, though, if we look at the re sharp recovery from this point through to at least this most recent uh, resistance level in terms of the first leg higher, that the positive sloping moving average only really begins to reestablish itself at the tail end of this initial recovery. Once price action starts to move higher then, that positive slope in moving average becomes a better reflection of what is currently going on. In other words, there's been a lagging period before the moving average begins to take effect so far, in other words, to reflect the underlying direction of the trend. If you see a mismatch between what's going on in price and the moving average, or the slope of the moving average, in other words, we have had a recovery from this part and the slope of the moving average has essentially remained flat to slightly negative, then that does not provide you with a buying opportunity. The trend has not been established if we need agreement between the sequence of higher highs and higher lows and the slope of the moving average. 
However, once the slope does start to take a positive nature in terms of its slope, then you can begin to consider looking for buying opportunities. So the early stage of a trend recovery in this instance will be difficult to trade because of the two components that we're looking at. However, if we look at the remainder of the life cycle of the trend, it lasts for long enough and hence gives us a number of opportunities to consider going long. Let's now look at how we can extend the discussion, given that we've been able to establish our directional bias, how we can improve on timing that directional bias. In other words, looking to time a trade, and what we'll be doing is we'll be using momentum for this purpose. As you recall from yesterday, momentum is a generic term for many related indicators. In yesterday's discussion, we looked at the relative strength index as well as the stochastic oscillator. For the purposes of today's discussion, we will simply just use the relative strength index that was developed by Wells Wilder. Remember that if a trend is up, your preference would be to look at buying that trend when momentum will likely be rising. If you recall from yesterday's discussion, a market that has prices moving in an upward direction, as well as prices moving in uh, rather momentum moving in an upward direction equates to a strong trending condition. In other words, given the fact that we would like to see a higher probability of momentum going up in the direction of the trend, that then means the oversold conditions in momentum are more important than the overbought conditions when we're dealing with an uptrend. So the first consideration that we can take on board is to consider going long when the momentum oscillator is oversold. In other words, the relative strength index is below 30. If, on the other hand, we're dealing with a downtrend, what you'd prefer to do is look to identify a selling opportunity when momentum is likely to be moving in a downward direction. That then necessarily means that the overbought conditions offer a much larger territory for a downward cycle in the momentum oscillator. So in bearish trends or in a bear market, overbought readings are more effective than oversold readings. I.e., if we take this consideration into account, the view will be to go short when momentum is in overbought territory. In other words, the relative strength index is above 70. What we're trying to establish is an ability to trade the direction and trade the direction of the trend when momentum is on our side. And this is how we will identify the timing element of either a long or a short position.